Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I come to you now and I ask you, Lord, ready my heart. Lord, ready all of our hearts and do in us what only you can do and do it through your word, I pray, and nothing else. Let your spirit rain down on us and let us absorb the truth and the love of your word, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, let me ask you something this morning. Are you about to listen? Will you listen in the next 45 minutes to an hour? Yes. Amen. David says yes. Well, let me ask you another question, and it need not be answered, but why will you listen? Why bother to listen if, in fact, you will? Some, if you're honest, would say, no, I'm not going to listen. I haven't before. I'm not now, and I don't intend to listen later. I see it sometimes on people's faces. I see it in the body language. I ask you, are you about to listen? If so, why? You see, some would say, well, the reason is obvious. I'm in church. Hear me, friends. Some of you who are in other churches need to stop listening. You need to stop listening to what you're hearing in church. Say what? Well, I thought I should listen because you're a preacher. You're a pastor. Listen, some of you need to stop listening to preachers and pastors. Some of you need to stop listening to preachers and pastors. I pray that you will listen this morning, and here's why. Because I'm going to share with you the truth of God's word. Because I stand before you as one committed imperfectly, but passionately to share with you the truth and the love of God and his word. And that's why you should listen. Let me show you an image. I want to show you a picture and ask you, where is this? Do you recognize it? And if you found yourself here, would you listen? And to whom would you listen? Some of you have picked it up. It's what's known as the base camp. 17,000 feet up, midway to the top of Mount Everest. Let me ask you, if you were in that place, if you're at base camp, would you be listening? And to whom would you listen? And why? I would venture to say if you found yourself there, you'd be listening to the guide. And I'd be willing to bet that you would have done some serious research into which guide you were going to listen to. Why? Because you say, well, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> My life is at stake. Well, I say to you here, friends, every bit of that is true spiritually when it comes to who you listen to when it comes to being the church. And some of you need to stop listening to people that are pouring poison into your ears. Some of you need to walk away from the fickle and recommit to the faithful. I want to show you another picture. And I want to ask you again, do you recognize this? Here, what you see is a glimpse from the top of Mount Everest. And what's not obvious here, as beautiful and as majestic as the view is, underneath all of that winter wear is an 80-year-old man. And the metaphor of the picture is to say that you are capable of doing far more than you would have ever imagined if you're listening to, filled with, and following the one true God of all creation. I also bring this to you in the form of a picture because it serves as another metaphor. You see, we are walking through the book of Acts and we find ourselves, in terms of the book of Acts, at the pinnacle. We are cresting the book of Acts. You say, Pastor Jeff, what do you mean? Well, you see, we have finished Acts chapter 14 and today we go into Acts chapter 15 and physically speaking, we are right smack dab in the middle of the book. 28 chapters. We're at the end of 14 and we're starting 15. If you were to draw this out, we are literally at the high point. But more than just how it's laid out physically, we're at the theological crescendo 
if you will, in terms of application of the book of Acts. We're at the place where you and I will be able to look out over the church and see not only what God has done in the first 14 chapters to get us here, but we're looking out over what is about to come. Let me explain. We're at the point where Acts 1.8 has been fully actuated, and from here on out, it's just going to spread. In the opening chapters, the first seven chapters of Acts, we focused on Jerusalem, and we saw God at work in Jerusalem. In chapters 8 through 12, we watched the Lord do his work and bring the church out to Judea and Samaria. And beginning in chapter 10, but culminating at the end of chapters 13 and 14, we've just seen the ends of the earth begun to be penetrated as the first missionary journey has gone out. And from here on out, what you and I are going to see is the spreading out over the globe by the gospel of Jesus Christ and the church. And so I say to you today, stop and take a breath. Take a look at what you see. And like those who summit Everest, I'm going to do my best to see to it that we cherish this moment and that we take it all in. And to that end, we will focus on just one verse today. For a reason that I pray you will see, Paul was passionate about. And I stand before you and say, I am personally passionate about as well. And I pray that this will become a personal passion for you as well. Let me show you a third image. You say, what's that, Pastor Jeff? That's a picture of what it looks like to come down from Everest. You see, as we get ready to go into the rest of the book of Acts, we're going to be coming down the mountain. Say, why do you want to show us that? For a couple of reasons. I want to reiterate that you need to listen very carefully. You see, of all the people that have died, all the recorded deaths on Everest... Do you know that only 15% of them are recorded as having been associated with climbing the mountain? It is clearly far more dangerous coming down. I believe that Paul would say to you and me if he were here, the apostle himself would say, be very careful, listen very carefully. Do not miss what is happening here because it's about to get very dangerous as the church begins to spread. You and I are going to see something that touched the very heart of Paul. Something that he was so passionate about that it never left his ministry from this point on. It was consistent until the last of his recorded ministry efforts say pastor jeff what is this what is it it's a warning to ask yourself am i listening to whom am i listening why am i listening you see ultimately it will determine what you learn i ask you what have you learned recently in terms of your relationship with Christ, in terms of what it is to be a Christian? What have you learned about being the church? You see, what you believe will determine who you become. What you believe will determine who you become. And what you believe in large part is dependent upon what you take in. And what you take in is largely dependent upon whom you allow to pour in to you. So I ask you again, are you going to listen this morning? If so, why? My prayer is that you will listen like a hiker preparing to go to the top of Everest, recognizing where you are and the stakes that you're in the midst of. You say, Pastor Jeff, I'm just living a regular life. I'm... I'm certainly not in the perils of trying to crest Everest. And I say, oh, oh, silly goat. Oh, baby lamb. 
you're in the midst of a war. And there is an enemy that is prowling and looking to devour your soul. 1 Peter 5, 8. You and I live in need of wearing perpetual armor, the armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10 and following. And I come to you today like Paul, feeling his pain and sharing his passion 